my job is to make sure. Hold on, not yet. He's not ready yet. Sorry. Oh, Give him a second. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We are here with Sandy. Sandy is one of the gurus of production here at Wyndham. It was actually our camera guy that said, we got to go talk to Sandy because he's doing this process over here. So please introduce yourself and tell us what you do here at Wyndham and kind of your whole process. Okay. Well, basically, my job is to make sure that the fabric that we sent to the customer matches to what they bought. We do all the printouts of the color combinations and we send one set to the mill and I keep an identical set here, which means whatever they look at, I'm looking at the same thing. So in about two to four weeks, we get something called a strike off, meaning it's a test print of the pattern. There could be 10 color combinations, there could be up to 100 with some of, some of our collections. When they're sending you a strike off too, are they sending you a singular one? Are they sending you 10 different ones they think are close? Usually they'll send one of each colorway at some time. They said, hey, we think this is it. Right. Check this out. Okay. Or with digital printing, sometimes they'll say send two. And when they send two, I'm sort of thinking, mm, that's one of them is probably the best they can get, but we'll see. Okay. For this collection, there was about, oh, eight or nine, about 10 color combinations. Okay. And what they did, there was a larger piece, but they sent this and I compare it to the artwork, the original artwork that we sent to the mill. The strike off to me is a little too green and they're missing some colors. So what I do is for each color combination, I write a comment for 17 delphinium, I'll say the overall too green and you're missing a few colors. The second strike off came in and I'm going, boom, they did it. Have you ever had it when you get one and you're just like, just start over? Like you guys just screwed oh, this yeah. up. Oh, no, well, yeah, no, we have some other, I'll go into some other disasters. And I say to them, what were you looking at? Were you, right. were you looking at this or were you looking over there? Right. The other thing to, that you have to also know when you're doing digital strike off, sometimes, or with any kind of strike off, sometimes you have to know when not to change it anymore because sometimes the next change is gonna put it over the, put it over the top and it won't match anymore. So you just have to look and go, that's it. And that comes with working with each mill for a long time and sure. knowing what they're going to do the next. Heavy. Now, should I accept as good as it's going to get? Sometimes. I try not to, but when, when it comes to certain kind of printings, you have to say stop. Well, I can give you an, another, another incident of something that, that's very frustrating. We have a collection called Palette. There's 100 color combinations. 99 of them I'm done with. They were, after five or six strike-offs, I was able to match it. Okay. Something's going on with this one. I've gotten 11 strike-offs and none of them have matched at all. I keep saying, make it redder, make it redder. They're not. They send me photographs. I said, no, it's not working. It's not as, you, and you can see that, I mean, it's sure. not me. This is it's, what I'm trying to do. This is almost a gradation. I mean, when I'm saying 11 strike-offs, 11 strike-offs. So today I had the owner of the mill come up and I'll handle it. I said, I don't have to write to the mill. I said, oh, no, I'll handle it. I'll take care of it, huh? We'll see what happens. So and tell us, and tell us, so, I mean, obviously you have your color issues. Do you ever have issues as far as quality, Absolutely. language bar language barriers? I mean, obviously they're speaking different languages too, well, right? the mills do have a person or two that do speak English, but sometimes I send the photograph and point to arrows, like this dot is uh, wrong sure or this line is too thick because that happens too because sure. i have to well not only am i checking color i'm checking the engraving and the line work and the sure. textures so you said you said engraving explain what that is so that our folks here on the watching and, can... well engraving is is it was the term used when they were making screens screens are actually were cut it's a photographic process and the screens are cut, so that's why they call it an engraving. Mm -hmm. I, we still call everything engravings, sure. but it's, 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 it's different now. The technology sure. has changed and the process is different. Sometimes you get quality issues. Quality so issues. So how does that, how does that work out and how do you change that? Because obviously you, you're, you're working with the plants that you already know mm -hmm. and you know what the goods are supposed to look like. So when they send you something that isn't, so how do you handle all that? Well, one of the major qualities is, is how, the feel of it, the finishing. Uh, we try to keep, these are striko, so it's really sure. not a thing, but you can tell this is, this is finished because this is a little less. Yeah. We also print fleece. Uh -huh. And sometimes they have, they, I said, this looks a little too fuzzy, which is an odd comment for fleece because it's fuzzy. Sure. But too it's, fuzzy. sometimes it's too <laughs> fuzzy and they have to shear it, they have to shave it down a little bit. Huh. I assume there's an agreement of just like, listen, no matter how many times I send it back to you, no matter how many times we have to get this, they just know that there's going to be unlimited proofs, right? 
many I've, nev I've never had 11, but... <laughs> people don't see the amount of work that goes into the fabric. And the people behind the scenes, you know, you, you have years and years of experience of saying, this isn't right, this isn't right, fix this, change this color, change that color. It takes an expert to say, to produce the type of goods that come from window. That's true, but you also, there's so many things you have to take in mind. This thing has to be delivered in a couple of weeks. You're gonna have to decide, okay, do we keep it? Do we fix it? Do we drop it? Because they can't get it. Sometimes you have a, a second to make that decision. Well, ship it, you know. <laughs> do it, I, yeah. I, had, I have a funny story I'd like to share. So please do, yeah. Many years ago, you, you went to the mill, you physically had to go to the mill, uh -huh. sit next to a machine, and back then it was only eight screens, period. Was it wasn't it. fancy, it was nothing. It was down in Georgia somewhere, it was 150 degrees, or three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and they come, with, come to me, and I go, it needs a little yellow. So they take my hand, they pull me to the back, there's, my ba there's five barrels of, of ink. He hands me a spoon. Uh, maybe one more. And I go back to the machine and I wait for it to come out again. Oh yeah, that looks good. Wow. Well, one night, I was, it was like three o'clock in the morning and I w was trying to match some colors. It was for Sears, are they still around? And it was 30,000 yards of one color, of one print. And I, they couldn't match it. They couldn't, I, was, what? I said, well, just stop and go on to something else. Nine o'clock in the morning, I called the boss and I said, look, uh, they're not getting the color. So he says to me, is it pretty? I go, yeah, print it. Done. You could have told me that at three o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> I should have realized. Well, I was, we're talking, I just started doing this for okay. a living. And I, did, I didn't know what the parameters or what was, or even how to talk back to the mill. Sure. You know, sure. all I knew was I was putting a spoon of yellow in <laughs> You're not matching something that's previously in production. You're making a totally new one. If it's close, if it's close to what you're yes. thinking, you're good. But yes. if you're trying to match something exactly of what it used to be. People have this on their shelf. Like for instance, this was sold and people have it on this shelf. I have this on my shelf. There you go. Yeah. And if you reordered it and I sent you this, you go, oh, no. No, that's not it. <laughs> Especially if I'm halfway through making kits or halfway through whatever, yeah. so. This is one of my biggest, biggest things to, to, to remember. It has to match whatever they had before. You mentioned, so this was 50 years ago that you were in this mill. Give us your background. So where are you from? How did you get into this? Did you study this? That's did you even more interesting. Let's hear it, please. <laughs> no, I'd love to hear it. I found out there was a school in Manhattan called School of Visual Arts. So you're from here, you're from I'm New from York. I'm from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay. I'm really Brooklyn. <laughs> so I found out and I said, my, this is a school that teaches art. I think I'd like to go, fine. Then all of a sudden they opened up photography. You know, like portion section. of it, yeah. So I went into photography and I said, wow, I like this. And I was ready to go. I was gonna be the next Richard Avedon. <laughs> that, obviously that didn't happen. I, I got a job. It was for a catalog. Now listen to this, it was a catalog house. These people had a machine. What you were able to do, you were able to go in and see yourself wearing outfits. Instead of trying on clothes, you could you could see yourself in an outfit. What okay. I did was I took pictures of models without their heads wearing clothing. One night, it was three, again with the three o'clock. <laughs> that's know what like it, your prime time, right? It, three it, it, and you know that I wake up now because that's when the cat wakes me up. There you go. <laughs> All the lights were lit and this model went to the bathroom. I don't hope I can tell this story. Yeah. And that was the last picture I took. So I looked for another job and I, is this too long? No, it's, no, it's, it's the behind the scenes that people want to but see. But this is so behind, no, it's not good. even the same. Okay. Somebody recommended me to this very fancy um, menswear designer, and I got a job working wholesale, selling very fancy neckwear and shirts. This is my introduction. Neckwear as in like ties? You know, Neckties, tie, neck okay. Ties. okay. So very fancy, okay. printed in Italy. Fabric was all printed in Italy. Beautiful showroom. It was in a townhouse, and they took me to dinner, and it was very, I was sucked up into this whole thing, and I, it was wonderful. But my roommate again says to me, Sandy, what are you doing? He talked me into going back to art school at night. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> for textile design. Why okay. textile design? Upstairs on the third floor of this townhouse, there was this little Russian man who did all the painting of all the designs, you know, like little tiny things for men's shirtings and neckties nice. and those little paces. I said, well, that, that looks like fun. So I went to the boss. I said, listen, um, you know, I'm very interested in that. Is there, a, I'm, I'm thinking of going to school at night and learning textile design. I hired you to work in the showroom and that's what you're gonna do. So I said, Mr. Srudi, when you die, are you gonna like leave me anything? He says, no, I quit. Yeah. <laughs> 
so that was that. So I went to school at night and I learned basic textile design and I, I got a portfolio and I went for a job. My first job was at Lowenstein, which was an enormous textile company back right. in the day. Gradually, they started sending me to the mill and that's when I learned how to do mill work. And I'm sure that's like your, your on the job training. Right? Like, it's not, totally. like, not like anybody walks no, in and says, this is how you work no, with a mill. No, you don't, they don't even talk like, good about, luck, Sandy. <laughs> they don't even tell you about a mill. At, at, you don't even know any of that stuff when, it, it, then, so maybe it now, it might be different now. Yeah. And then one day, about 11 years ago, the guy I used to work for said, listen, they need someone at Wyndham to do some something. I'm not quite sure what it was, it might be freelance. So I came up here and I met the stylist. She instantly hired me. She got fired. <laughs> I took over the, all the mill work. Maish and Katie are handling all the anthology and all the other printing and everything else. And I handled uh, Wyndham and them. Awesome. You probably never would have thought 50 years ago you'd be sitting here today working with mills, take, doing digital prints, doing 25, 24 screens. I didn't even designs. think I'd be alive. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's, oh. it's the people behind the fabrics that really make this industry and make a difference. So, In the history of me working in this industry, I have never seen a place like this, the way it's operated, the way it's run. I've worked for bosses that sit back and put their feet up and just go point like this. We work for a man that actually works. Mm -hmm. He is down there in the trenches. He is everywhere. He's constantly working. Yeah. And this, it, you know, this keeps you going. You yeah. need that. So he's talking about Mickey guys who you guys have seen in the other videos and it's, you can see he knows the business. He walks around. He and knows he, everyone. And, he and, cares. And you can also tell he loves it. Yeah. As I said, I've never, I've never had an experience like this. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again for sharing it. Oh, my appreciate pleasure. it, thank guys. You. Sandy, right here. And like I said, like the video below, subscribe, and check out the rest of the videos down in the description below. We'll see you next time. Nice. You that's awesome. Use oh yeah.